Hi everyone, Mike here from Watch It Paint It, and this time I'm painting the Queen from Nemesis. If your queen is like mine, she has some notable gaps along the horns, her snout and neck, plus a few other places. I'm going to fill these in with a thick matte varnish from Liquitex. You can't do this with all matte varnishes. So far, this is the only one that's worked for me, but it works beautifully. If you're watching my Blackstone Fortress series, I've been using it to fill gaps on those miniatures as well. After brushing one or two layers along the gaps, they now look like this. This video will be the first where I incorporate a two-level paint job. The first level will be a simple, quick paint job for those who want to get the miniatures on the table as soon as possible. The second level will be extra features you can add to your miniature to make it really stand out. The first step is a Xenothal Prime, exactly like I did with the Intruders. If you missed that one, the link should be in the top right corner now. Next I'm painting the snout to the queen and the inside of the mouth with a dark flesh color. This one is Iridian Flesh from P3. The queen has some structures that almost look like gills on the side of her head, and I'm painting these with Screamer Pink. She also has similar looking structures along both sides of her arms and legs, and I'm hitting these with a Screamer Pink as well. In the Alien movies, the Xenomorphs have either crystalline teeth or metallic teeth. It's hard to tell. I started off with bright silver on the Queen, but in level 2 I switched to a light grey color. For now though, shiny silver from Army Painter. Next is the mechanical arm. I want this to be yellow, but you can't paint yellow over greys and blacks, at least not very easily. So I'm going to start off with a light tan, in this case Xandri Dust from GW. Next I'm painting all the slime that's all around the little zerglings and dripping down the sides of this hatch. For this I'm using Battle Dress Green. The hatch and the floor are both getting completely covered with Celestra Grey. And I forgot to put this color in the picture at the beginning, but the underside of the hatch door is being painted with Mechanicus Standard Grey. Now it's time for the washes. Much like the intruders, I'm covering the queen with a wash instead of painting her, except that her wash will be 10 drops of Druki Eye Violet and 4 drops of Nuln Oil. You'll need more than that in total, but I recommend that you do this in stages so that your wash has time to settle and dry. I'm starting off by completely covering the head, torso, and arms. The two main things that you want to do here is to make sure you don't miss any spots, because after the wash dries, you can't add more without leaving tide marks and also to make sure that there's no pooling in flat areas. If there is, rinse off your brush in water, wipe it off, and then dab up the pools, or just spread them out with your damp brush. So once that was done, I set it aside for 10 minutes and then repeated the process with the tail and the legs. Now I'm mixing up some of the same color mix from my Intruders video for the gross little babies. 10 drops of Celia Green Shade and 4 drops of Nuln Oil. This I'm going to spread all over the babies, trying not to hit anything else. I did, however, have to touch up a little bit of slime afterwards. Next I'm going to use Nuln Oil on the hatch and the floor, but I'm only going to use it around the edges and details. I'm not going to completely cover everything. If 
For the mechanical arm, I'm using Agrax Earthshade, and I am completely covering this. Once all the washes have dried, it's time to do some dry brushing and touch-ups. I'm first using Spaceship Exterior on the Queen, though you can use any really light grey colour. I'm trying to focus this mostly on the surfaces that are facing upwards, or just edges that I want to stand out on her body. I'm going to use the same color to dry brush the upward facing edges of the little zerglings and also any hard edges on the floor and the hatch. Once that's done, I'm going back to the Celestra Grey and I'm going to touch up all the areas where I used the Null Oil. I only want a thin line of shadow around all the details. This is why I didn't completely cover the grey areas earlier. Next, I'm going to dry brush the entire arm with Baylor Brown, though if you don't have this, you can just use the original Xandri Dust mixed with a bit of bright yellow. Now I'm using a smaller brush and I'm going to focus on all the edges of the arm with some Cygnus Yellow. The gills in the areas that were painted pink earlier are getting a dry brush with their original color, Screamer Pink. And finally I'm giving the rim of the base a coat of German Grey. This is the end of the speed paint portion of the video. It was longer than the intruders, but there's a lot of detail on this miniature. All you need to do now is spray the entire thing with a coat of satin varnish. If you're looking to add even more details, feel free to continue on to the second half of the video. Here are the colors I'll be using in part two. A lot of them are repeats, but there's a few new ones in there. I'm going to start with plate mail metal, and I'm going to paint all the rotating parts of the mechanical arm. Now I'm switching to German Grey, and I'm going to use this to make a couple scratch marks. The Queen only has two fingers and a thumb, and it makes sense that she might have scratched up the hatch before getting the door open. I'm also going to use the German Grey to paint all of the horns on the Queen. Next I'm switching back to the plate mail steel and I'm going to trace a thin line in the center of each of the scratches. All of the gill like structures are going to get a second dry brush, this time with Emperor's Children from Games Workshop. Next I'm going to paint all the mouths of the little guys with Cardic Flesh from P3. You can't really see the mouths of most of them unless you turn the miniature upside down, but I like knowing that they're painted. Switching to washes now, in the center of each mouth I'm adding a small dab of Reichland Flesh Shade. And for all the parts of the arm that were painted with plate mail metal, I'm giving them a wash of Nuln Oil. I wanted to add a bit of flair to the floor, so I'm going to go with some yellow and black warning stripes. I'm first painting the area that will have the stripes with Xandri Dust. Next I'm going to make some black lines with the bad and black. These are going to look terrible at first, but you want to start out thin and then slowly widen the lines to keep them neat and straight. The other lines are going to get a layer of Cygnus Yellow. I'm now going to highlight the mouth of the Queen. I'm starting off with the original Iridian Flesh I used, but this time I'm going to add a small amount of Slanish Grey to lighten it up a bit. 
I'm just painting the upper surfaces of the mouth and avoiding all the wrinkles in the flesh. I'm going to follow that up with a smaller layer of cardic flesh which I've thinned down to a glaze. Next I'm using white scar to give a brighter highlight to all the edges of the hatch and the floor. I'm just lightly tracing my brush around all the details. Now I'm going to do a color transition on the outer horns. These are going to change from German grey at one end to slanish grey on the other. I'm starting by painting the upper half of each horn with Mechanica Standard Grey. Before that's even dry, I'm painting the upper half of the Mechanicus area with Slanish Grey. To do the transition, I've thinned the Mechanicus down to a glaze and I'm brushing from the German Grey area into the Mechanicus Grey area to blend the two colors together. Then I'll do the same thing with the Slanish Grey. I'm going to brush from the Mechanicus Grey area up to the Slanish Grey area. This will take a couple of layers to get it smooth and you may need to muddle the two colors together where they meet by mixing them together right on the horn. If you're not happy with the way this is looking, just repaint each horn with the German Grey and no harm done. For the front horns, they're just getting a glaze of Mechanica Standard Grey on their upturned surfaces. Now for the teeth, I'm repainting each tooth with Mechanicus Standard Grey. After that, I'm painting most of it with Celestra Grey, leaving only a dark rim where the tooth is attached to the mouth. And finally, I'll paint the tips of each tooth with Althuan Grey. Nearly done now, I want the non-alien parts of this model to lose their satin shine, so I'm going to cover the floor, the hatch, and the arm with the same Liquitex matte varnish that I used to do the gap filling earlier. The final extra feature I'm going to do is to add some Nurgle's Rot. This is a glossy green technical paint that I'm going to use for the slime. I'm first going to add some undiluted drips all around on the floor. Then I'm adding about equal parts of water to the Nurgle's Rot and I'm going to use this to glaze all of the painted slime and on top of the heads and bodies of most of the little aliens. And here is the finished queen. Thank you very much to all the patrons who supported the creation of this video, and a special thanks to Brian Jones. I love chatting with you guys in Discord and sharing pictures of our miniatures. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Ben and I never sleep, so we're very quick to answer you. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.